if I've got my accent out here, my accent in between, the M line is as far together as that accent can go. All right? And if the accent actually meets in the middle, that's a pretty strong contraction. All right? Now, as the accent moves back, all right, it can get further away. It's just harder for the myosin head to start the contraction. All right, so we definitely have the M line, and I have at the end of every sarcomere, where I've got the attachments of the actin and the myosin, okay, the border right there at the end of it, from one end to one end, with my sarcomere in the middle, middle, this is a Z line. A Z yes. Because when you look at it under a scope, it looks like a Z. So Z to Z is the border for one sarcomere. So I want you to know your Z discs. I want you to know your M line. Attached at the end of the back one, I think it's, we have some little elastic chains called tightness. They're going to be able to help with that elastic ability of the muscle to contract and relax. This is the protein that gets broken down in muscular dystrophy. So if you know anyone who has that debilitating disease, this is the point that their body is breaking down. That is definite research right there in action. So we've got my sarcomere, we've got my actin, I've got my myosin. Um, I've got to have the ability for it to do this number, like this. I'm going to need my calcium. I'm going to have my troponin. I'm going to have my trophomyosin. Um, I'm going to need sodium. I'm going to need potassium. Not too much right now that we're not going to need for this muscular system. Just so you can move. Pretty amazing if you actually think about it for a few minutes. This is sort of the way it looks when you take some one of those fibers and look at it crossways looking down into it. You'll notice that you're outnumbered by the accent. Not as many myosin are present because myosin has two Doppler heads and therefore can pull two actins at a time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, the movement of muscle is dependent on what we call the sliding filament model. Because every bit of study that has been done to this point proves that this is what happens when muscles contract. The actin slides over the myosin. Because the myosin is just simply pulling it. At this point in time, it hasn't reach the point of theory, but I got a feeling, maybe in your lifetime, not mine, you're going to see this become a law. Because everything that's been done so far in studying the movement of muscle has not changed. Um, this I would be afraid to say how long this sliding filament model has been in place and nothing has disproved it. 
So I got a feeling in your lifetime, you're going to see it come along. So when the muscle contracts, the sarcomere shortens. When the muscle relaxes, it lengthens. Based on the activity that has to take place. Take a break. Be back at 3 30. Think about the muscles moving. The sarcomere is the actin and the myosin. So each overlapping that you see. Oh, that's one. That's one. Yes. They're, well, they're trying to show you that this would be your myosin and this is your actin. Okay. So. So from here to here, this this squiggly to this squiggly would be one sarcomere. And that will be the midline right there? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm.